Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Euler's method. So Euler's method is a method used to find a numerical approximation of the solution to an initial value problem. Okay, so um, let's take a look at this one here. So we know that dy dx is 2x, and we know that y of 0 is equal to 1. We want to use Euler's method to approximate the y value when x is equal to 1. Well, it's not too hard to solve this differential equation. So we know that the family of curves would be y equals x squared plus some constant. But if it's going to pass through the point x equals 0, y equals 1, then the constant we would need to add is 1. Okay, so the actual solution to this initial value problem is y equals x squared plus 1. Therefore, it's quite obvious that um, the y of 1 is going to simply equal 2. But for illustration purposes, I'm going to use this, this case right here, even though we wouldn't need to. So let me go ahead and draw the solution curve. OK, so the idea behind Euler's method is essentially to start at the given point, 0, 1, and build a graphical approximation of the solution curve. So we're going to build. A, a, an approximation of this curve right here. All right, so there's a very specific way that we're going to build an approximate, um, an approximation of the solution curve, and we're going to use continuous line segments. Okay, so we're going to start at the given point and use continuous line segments to build an approximation to the graph of this right here. Okay, before you use Euler's method, before you start it, you have to decide on what's called the step size. And if we think of a line segment as having a rise and a run, the step size is going to equal the length of the run. Okay, so we'll use, say, a step size of 0.25. Okay, now we're ready to get to work. So the easiest way to keep track of the information is with a table of values. So I'll make a table of x's and y's. So as I said, when we construct or build the solution, we use the, f the given x and y as our starting points. So that's going to be the first x value and the first y value. So we have x equals 0 and y equals 1 is the starting point. And then for, basically, we're going to be recording the ends of each of the line segments. Okay, so now we know how to get to the end of the line segment. We're just going to go out 0.25 along the x-axis. And we, still, we know what the starting value is. To build the approximate solution, we're going to use, for the slope of each line segment, we're going to be using the differential equation, or the slope function. So for the slope of this very first line segment, I'm going to take the given coordinates and plug it into the slope function. So my m value is going to be 2 times x. So it turns out I don't need the y value to find the slope. So 2 times x, or 2 times 0, which is 0. So this first line segment I'm going to draw, it's going to have a slope of 0 and a run of 0.25. Okay, so there is my 0.25. So now I'm going to record the coordinates of the ending point in the table. The ending point has an x-coordinate of 0.25. And the y-coordinate, since it's a horizontal segment, the y-coordinate is still 1. All right, now I move on to the next segment in the build. To get the, next, the slope of the next segment in the build, I'm going to take the coordinates of this point, this x and y, plug it into the slope function to get my next slope. So it's going to be 2 times the x-coordinate, 2 times 0.25, that's going to be 0.5. So I'm going to use the same run. So I'm going to go at another 0.25, so that's going to hit
hit me at 0.5. And now I'm going to draw a little line segment whose slope is a half. So it's around, say, there. And now I'm going to record the coordinates of this point. Well, the x-coordinate is 0.5. but I need to get the y-coordinate. So if I can find out that length there, which is the height of that little triangle, then I just add that to this value, which is y equals 1, and it tells me what this new y-value is. Well, I know that the run is 0.25, so I'll just use this as my triangle. The run is 0.25. Um, this I don't know, so I'll call it delta y. And, well, I do know that the slope is 0.5. Well, I know that slope is equal to rise over run. So 0.5 is equal to the rise, which is what I want divided by the run, which is 0.25. So that means that delta y equals 0.5 times 0.25. And I'm going to keep it in this form um, for a bit so we can see a pattern. Okay, so this here is 0.5 times 0.25. So that's this uh, little height right here. So this new y value is 1 plus 0.5 times 0.25. So if we record in the table here, that's equal to 1.125. All right, let me erase uh, all of this stuff. Okay, now we're ready to build the next segment. So we're going to start at this point, and the run again is going to be 0.25. So we have 0.5 plus 0.25, that's going to be a 0.75. Okay, so we're, we know we're going to end at x equals 0.75. So that's going to be our next x-coordinate. Um, but we need to find the y-value. But first, we have to figure out what the slope of this segment is going to be. Okay, so to get the slope of this segment, we're going to use the coordinates of this point right here. And that's 0.5 comma 1.125. But again, in this particular case, we only need the x-coordinate. So it's 2 times x, so 2 times 0 0.5, that's going to be 1. So the slope we're going to use for this case is um, m equals 1. Okay, so that's the slope for, um, that's the slope at this point right here, and that's why I'm recording it in this line. Okay, so we draw a little line segment whose slope is 1. Okay, now we need to find this y value. Okay, so again, we know the x coordinate is 0 0.75. We need the y value. We're going to again use the fact that we're going to again take a look at this little triangle here, and we know that the run is 0.25. Um, we want the rise, that's our delta y, and we know the slope is now equal to 1. So delta y is equal to the slope times the rise, so 1 times 0.25. So our new y-coordinate is the old y-coordinate, 1.125, plus this delta y, so plus 1 times 0.25. And maybe you're starting to see a pattern about how we can get the next y-coordinate in line. Okay, so this is equal to 1.375. All right, we have one final line segment to draw. We know it's going to end at x equals 1, because that's 0.25 away from 0.75. And so what we need is the slope of it. So we use the coordinates of the last point, 0.75 and 1.375, as in, in our effort to find a slope to use, 
and so it's going to be 2 times the x coordinate, 2 times 0.75, that's going to be 1.5. So the new slope we're going to use is 1.5. So uh, that's maybe right around that amount. And our last thing that we need to do, well, two more things. We have to put our last two coordinates in. So x equals 1 is the last x coordinate. And we need to get that y coordinate. So same as before, we draw our little triangle. We find the delta y. So that's our delta y. 0.25 is still the run. But now the slope, the slope is not 1. The slope is 1.5. So this delta y is going to be the slope times the run. So 1.5 times 0.25. So the new y coordinate is 1.5 times 0.25 away from the old y coordinate. So that was 1.375. So 1.375 plus 1.5 times 0.25. And that's equal to 1.75. So this y value, we were trying to approximate y of 1. Well, here's x equals 1. y of 1 is approximately equal to that y value. So y of 1 is approximately equal to 1.75. Okay, so we know the actual value is y equals 2. Um, so we're 0.25 units off. All right, let's do another one together. Uh, if you're feeling courageous, go ahead and press pause and um, try it on your own. Otherwise, just go ahead and listen right now. So we start by plotting the given point, 1, 2. And we need our table of values. So x and y. So our given x is 1. Our given y is 2. And we need to find the slope. So the slope is y minus x, so that's going to be 2 minus 1, or 1. So we're going to use a step size of 0.1. So it means our first coordinate here, our, our next x coordinate, is going to be 1.1. And we're going to draw a little line segment with a slope of 1. And we need to find the coordinates of this point. Well, the x coordinate is 1.1. And we need the y coordinate. So if we look at the little triangle here, imagining we're looking for that delta y there, well, we know the step size is 0.1, so the run here is 0.1. We want delta y. The slope is equal to 1. Delta y is equal to the slope times the run, or times the step size. So delta y is 1 times 0.1. So the y value is going to be, we started at 2, plus the amount we need to add, 1 times, so 1 times 0.1. So that's going to be equal to 2.1. So our new y value is 2.1. OK, now let's go to our next line segment. We're going to go another 0.1 units away. So that takes us to. Uh, 1.2. So our new, our next x coordinate is 1.2. We need the y value. To get the y value, we need to know how steep we should draw the segment. And so we're looking for our m value is the y coordinate minus the x coordinate. So 2.1 minus 1.1. That's going to be equal to one. Okay. So we draw. Uh, Line segment with slope 1. Equal to there. OK, so now let's find the change in y. The, rise, the, the run again is 0 0.1. The slope again is equal to 1. So our new delta y is the same as our old delta y, so 1 times 0.1. So we have uh, our, our old y value of 
and we're going to add the change in y, which is 1 times 0.1. So we get 2.2. All right, so we have one more segment to go because we wanted to approximate y of 1.3. So we go out another 0.1 unit, so that takes us to 1.3. And we need to find the slope. So the slope that we're going to use is the slope of the line joining these two points. And I'm sorry, the slope of the line at these two points. So we take, again, remind, we, get, we take the y-coordinate minus the x-coordinate. So 2.2 minus 1.2, that's going to be equal to 1 again. Okay, so definitely just a coincidence. You don't always get the same slope as we saw in the last problem. So we draw our next line segment, slope of 1. We need to find the delta y. And the delta y is equal to the run, or actually I always did it as the slope, times the run. So our final x-coordinate is 1.3, and our final y value is the old y value of 2.2 plus the change in y, 1 times 0.1, and that's equal to 2.3. So it turns out that y of 1.3 is approximately equal to 2.3. Okay, it turns out that the particular solution to this differential equation is y equals x plus 1. And so if we look at y of 1.3, we get 1.3 plus 1, which is 2.3. So we see, in this case, Euler's method is precise. OK, now let me point out the pattern in case you haven't seen it. So let me just start by labeling this x as x0, x1, x2, and x3. We'll label this y as y1, I'm sorry, y0, y1, y2, and y3. So let's look at how we got y1. It was 2 plus 1 times 0.1. Well, that 0.1 was the, the run here. And so we see this 0.1 in all of them. So what we're multiplying each of these by is the step size. Okay, so to get y1, we took the old y value, y sub 0. And then we had the step size. We multiplied the step size by the slope. What was the slope of the last point? So it was y prime of 1, 2, so x0, y0, to get y2, we used the y-coordinate from the last step, so it was equal to y1 plus the step size times the slope at the last point, so y prime of x1, y1. Finally, to get y3, we use the old y-coordinate, y sub 2, and we added the step size, which is the run, times the slope at the old x-coordinate and y-coordinate. So the slope at x2, y2. So in general, to get y sub n, you take y sub n minus 1 plus the step size times the slope function evaluated at x sub n minus 1, y sub n minus 1. Okay, so that is, this formula is um, really a shortcut to having to draw these little line segments in order to fill in the table.